Hello, it's great to see you all again. And today, we're gonna to look at a whole range of GoPro accessories. And this is gonna be relevant for both beginners and the more experienced of you out there. So, if you want to jump to a specific section, just look at the chapter markers below or in the description. So without further ado, let's get into it. So in this first section, we're gonna look at essential items. The first of which is a memory card. So if you're lucky enough to get a memory card with your GoPro camera, it's more than likely to be the SanDisk Extreme. Uh, the most latest cameras should be shipping with a V30 U3 like this one. Now, these are tried and tested. I've had multiple versions of this same card and I can't recommend it enough. The next essential item is the battery. So without this, obviously your camera wouldn't work at all. It wouldn't even turn on. I've been testing out third party batteries like the Smartries or the My Boats or even Telesyn batteries. And um, you get sort of a mixture of results. Uh, I would swear by GoPro batteries every time if you can afford them. If anyone wants these, they're for um, the GoPro 7, 6 or 5. Just comment below and then I'll try and get them out to you. So the next items we're going to look at are selfie sticks and tripods. This is called a GoPro Shorty. Uh, it's a tripod that is also like a little handheld selfie stick. So what I like about this one is that it's really compact. If you did want something a bit more heavy duty, then you do have the El Grande. So this is great for bigger selfies with a bigger group of people. There is also the three-way. There is a newer version out. So this one does come with a little tripod that opens out like so. And then you can just sort of adjust it to where you need it. And also, if you want to do a selfie without your hand appearing in, you can flex it up into the right position and then take selfies without your arm or stick in view. Now these are carbon fiber uh, grips, poles from POV gear. Now what I love about these are they're super light, but also super strong. And it feels like something that you could really go like skiing down the mountain with and not worry too much. Uh, it's got a really nice feel and grip to it and it's surprisingly strong so it's just a twist to open and then you twist and hear it click into place and that is rock solid like i'm trying with all my force to try and close it and it's really really solid uh, so that is really really responsive that's the standard version they also have a pro version so if you are doing anything where there could be some sort of impact it's screwed tight instead. And what that does is enable you to do even more heavy action sports without it ever coming loose and closing. We're actually going to be giving away a set of this pro version with the carbon fiber floaty grip as well. So if you want to be in with a chance of winning a set of these, then subscribe and you'll be notified when the video goes live. Another essential item is this GoPro sleeve. So it's a silicon holder that you just pop your camera in and it comes with a strap that goes around your neck and then you can just casually walk around. So say you're on a day trip around the town, you're just walking around and you see something you want a video or take a photo of, it's there right when you need it. So the bike mount, definitely one of my favorite accessories because of how versatile it is. You can be running around, have it in your mouth, and then clip it to your chesty or the handler really quickly and easily. And uh, it's very secure because of this locking mechanism. Lift it out before you can unclip. Uh, really, really useful. Another really useful and almost essential thing is this Falcon Andulanzi. It's like a quick release plate system. Now what it does is you unloosen it like so and then you clip it to a bag strap and then you tighten it down. So you imagine that is on your strap of your bag. Then if you wanna clip your camera into it, you just clip it like so, move the camera to the right position. Then you wanna take it out, you just press on that button there. And if you don't want it to accidentally loosen, you move the button around so it can't be pressed. 
That way, when there's something in, even if you're pressing on that, it's not coming out, so it's really secure. And this can just go on any backpack, so you turn any backpack into a GoPro compatible backpack. Another somewhat essential is this suction mount system. So it comes with a few different bits and bobs, so it comes with the buckle mount there, or a smaller buckle mount, or on there right now I've just got like a standard GoPro mount but it's the shorter one. So you put it on whatever clean flat surface, which probably isn't this table. You press the air out of it, and then you lock it down, and that is strong enough to probably lift this table up. Another essential item are glass screen protectors. So if you get something like these X-Clear um, hydrophobic protectors, it comes with a front and a back screen protector, um, it protects it from any sort of breakage and it's designed so that it would break and crack, take the impact before the actual glass that's important does. These are glass as well um, and if you have something like the GoPro 8 where you can't actually replace this front part, it's imperative that you get these kind of things because this front part doesn't come off on the 8. But the, the other really good thing about these particular protectors are that because they're hydrophobic, as I mentioned earlier, any water or snow or ice or even mud when it gets onto the surface of it it will just slide straight off so if you ever have stuff where you're going in the water and you come out again and there's drops on the screen and it kind of ruins the shot if you've got these x clear hydrophobic protectors that's not going to happen so i've had the same set on this camera this is my old gopro 7 i've had this for a couple of years now and i've always had this on there and they still work now as good as they ever did. So highly recommend these. They're not the cheapest screen protectors you can get, but they are probably the best that I've used. So definitely recommend these. If you want to know more about these, I'll put a link down in the description so you can check them out. Highly recommended. One of our last sort of recommended essential items would be the tool as it's named. It just goes on the outside and you can use that to add leverage when you want to rotate it. So you've got all that extra leverage there to twist it really, really tight. So tight that it doesn't move. So the final essential item that I'm going to look at is clamps. So this is the Jaws Flex clamp. So you can just have the clamp by itself. And then if you've got the bite mount, that can clip straight in. So hence why I love the bite mount. And then you can just clamp it to all sorts of things. So I've clamped it to benches, to poles to trees and it's a really really strong clamp so when it's clamped onto whatever edge you can also bend it around and uh, take footage in lots of different angles so in this section we're going to look at lens accessories you can remove that front lens like so so you pull it towards you and then rotate and it comes off and then you can replace it with these ND filters if you don't know what ND filters are for, it's essentially sunglasses for your camera. But if you are maybe a bit more of a pro user, you might want to experiment with ND filters if you're trying to maintain a 180 degree shutter angle. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's lots of videos on YouTube about shutter angle. Other filters include something like a CPL, and that stands for circular, circular polarized filter. And this one from Telesyn just pops over. So if you have something like the GoPro 8, all of your filters will just pop over like so. And what that does is it cuts out a radius light. Why would you use these? Say if you want to take footage from the outside of a car to the inside and you're getting glare off the windshield or any part of the car, this will cut that glare out and allow you to see what's in the car. We also have the Max Lens Mod. When attached to your GoPro 9, it gives you a much wider angle, and it allows you to do that thing where you keep the horizon leveled no matter the orientation of your camera. So in this section, we're gonna look at things you use in the water. This is my most used, and this is the GoPro Handler, and I use it often with a bite mount. Uh, what I really like about this is just how good it feels in the hand, because it's got the sort of neoprene spongy cover so you can really get a good grip of it. It's got elasticated strap here so when it's on you you can make it pretty tight and um, there's a button there to lock this thing into place so you can make it as tight as you need it. Also combining with the bite mount 
you can have a floaty back door, which replaces the back door on, on your cage or your super suit if you're really cautious. Now, the super suit, I would highly recommend it for anyone going in the sea, and this is why. So the way the waterproof rating works, on the GoPro cameras, without any sort of case or super suit on, it's rated up to 10 meters. So it's guaranteed for half an hour at that amount of pressure. But if you are at the surface of the water and you slam your camera into the water, that could far and exceed 10 meters of pressure. So don't just assume because you're not going below 10 meters that you're not gonna impact your camera with more pressure than 10 meters, even for a brief second, could cause water ingress. So say you're jumping off a cliff into the water, I highly, highly recommend the super suit. Now, at the moment, the super suit wouldn't be guaranteed for 60 because I've got uh, one of the back doors on there that makes it open. Now, if you do have the proper back door on there, which is easily swappable, it then becomes rated up to 60 meters of pressure which means that if you're jumping from a cliff edge or something like that into water, that moment of impact where the camera hits the water, it'll be much more protected. So for me, if I ever go to the sea, I'm gonna be using a case like this, that's for sure. Another favorite is this dome from Telesyn. So what it comes with, it comes with a waterproof floaty hand grip, which you can use separately from the whole thing. And also you uh, clip your camera in, inside here is you use this trigger to start and stop recording or take photos and there's an external button here so that you can change uh, settings on your camera even whilst underwater now this enables you to get shots where you're half in the water half out we have also touched upon the POV gear carbon fiber pole so it doesn't have the grippiness of the handler but it does have the superior strength of carbon fiber and the lovely anodized aluminium thumb screw there. Another thing to note, with all these water accessories, you often get these little pieces of what looks like tissue paper. And what these are, are fog removal inserts. So if you go from a hot environment to suddenly a cold environment, you might get some condensation forming. Uh, what that means is that the water that's evaporated into the air suddenly condenses, causing a fog over the front of your super suit or this dome here. So if you put in a couple of these, that means when you're going from these different environments, they'll absorb that extra moisture so it doesn't ruin your shots. Because once you're under the water, you can't exactly open everything up and try and clean the water out because then all the water will get in. So make sure you get these fog inserts. They're really, really cheap to buy if you run out as well. Another mount that's really useful in the sea is this bodyboard mount. It's easy to fit it, it bites in, it's nice and secure. And what it en enables you to do is to clip in your buckle mount or your bite mount onto the bodyboard so you can get a sort of POV shot as you're bodyboarding. You can also turn it around to face you. So this next section I want to talk about POV or point of view items. So uh, the first of which I'm going to talk about is the old trusty bite mount. So POV being point of view, the um, most closest to your actual eyes that we're probably gonna get is with the bite mount. So that I would just pop in my mouth like so. And because it's attached to your head, it's sort of stabilized by your body already. And again, uh, because it looks wherever you move your head, it's easy to sort of direct the action and know exactly where you're gonna be looking at. Um, so whatever you're doing, you can look towards where you need to go. And this is another favorite of people that do like parkour and free running, like Stora or people like that. They love the bike mount too, because um, it's easy to just chuck it in, go, get a great POV shot. So another point of view can be a dog's point of view. Now this is the GoPro fetch mount. It's really simple to, to put on your dog. It just has these clips. So you fit it to your dog, wrap it round, and then you have both a chest point of view with this part and then the top point of view which can shoot above them or behind them too. Also we've got a chest mount. So the chest mount, you just pop it on, then put your arms through and then clip it like so. 
And um, that's perfect for motorbikes or cycling or skiing. I would say use this for that because you're definitely going straight forward and the camera's gonna be looking straight forward. Um, if you're doing something like longboarding or skateboarding, then this isn't possibly the best one for that because it will just be looking to the side. So this next section is about pro level gear. Now, um, a lot of people don't refer to GoPro cameras as professional gear, but they're wrong. Because what you can do with GoPros is get shots that you couldn't otherwise get with massive bulky cameras. You can fit GoPros all over someone's body, all over in little crannies and little cracks and take them underwater, throw them up on a drone or an FPV drone and all sorts, which you can't easily do with big bulky cinema cameras. So I would say that potentially GoPros can be seen as professional level, maybe. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the Karma grip. Uh, almost a drone there. Although GoPros 7, 8 and 9 have the hyper smooth stabilization, which is quite impressive considering it's only digital stabilization, it's still only digital stabilization. Now with something like this, it's a three axis gimbal, meaning that it stabilizes this orientation forwards and back and whatever that one's called. And it's easy to set up. Like normally gimbals, you have to balance them, move weight around and try and get it to balance. But because this is made specifically for the GoPro cameras, unfortunately not the eight or nine, but the seven, six or five, uh, it's really easy to use. And it charges your camera up while you use it. So it makes your battery go from like an hour up to like eight hours. So you can be out in a day getting loads of really cool footage. You can clip it to your bag for the little ring that goes around the outside of it. You can control lots of stuff, like recording, turn it off and on, change the modes, change how this moves as well. So if you double press it, was it, is it double press? Yeah. Then it goes up and down as you move it. If you press it in again, it will just stay facing forward. If you hold it, then it will get to the orientation until you let go, and then it will stay in that orientation. So it's a really useful piece of kit. Now, is it better than hyper smooth? Probably, but look how big it is. So you just need to decide, you know, is a gimbal too much? Is it too big for what you want to use it for? Um, stabilization wise, it will always be better than electronic stabilization. I would definitely point in the direction of a video by Mick Burma, and he's done a test and shown the difference between using a GoPro 7 with a gimbal and using the GoPro 9 hyper smooth stabilization. So I recommend you check that out and then make your decision for yourself. Now Gian do make a small gimbal that works with the eight and nine, and that might be worth looking into. So I'll put a link for that in the description so you can check that out too if you want some real gimbals in your life. Now this is something that um, it's kind of not really often spoken about, but it's a crane arm from Joby. It's got, a little hand grip, which when you rotate that, it moves that. So as you're going up, you can start looking down with your camera, and as you're going down, you can start looking up. So you can do these jib shots. But you can also buy just this part, the string, and the end part, and it actually can clamp onto any cylindrical item. So if you've got an old broom handle or something like that, you can use that. I'd recommend it, it's just a bit of fun. You come up with some really interesting shots with it and you can use it with other things other than a GoPro too. So, lots of fun. This can often be overlooked by a lot of GoPro users. The fact that GoPros need a lot of light. So if you've ever used a GoPro in a sort of dark environment, it's not a very pleasant day, or if you're indoors and there's not a lot of light around, the footage can come out quite poor looking. And the real trick is to keep your ISO level 400 or below on your GoPro cameras, and that if it's not bright enough, to use a light to brighten it up even more. So you can get something like this one from Ulanzi. Now I really love this light because it's all magnetic and stuff. So this diffuser on the front, which makes the light softer, which means that when it hits your face, where it goes from light to dark, there's more of a gradient there. Whereas when it's harder, when this thing is off, the light is more direct and there's a stronger gradient where it goes from light to, light to suddenly dark. 
So if that's the look you're going for, then you would take the diffuser off. Uh, it comes with an internal battery. It's rechargeable with USB-C and also powered by USB-C. It's got all kinds of um, settings and things you can do, like it's an RGB light. You can go through all the colors of the spectrum. It also has all these different effects. So let's... So lightning and stuff like that. And uh, because of the size of it, you can screw in one of these shoe mount adapters and then you can fit it on top of like one of these cages. So if it's a dark environment, you've got a light ready to go straight on top of the camera. And the beauty of this one is not only is the diffuser magnetic, but there's actually magnets on the back there. So if there's any sort of metal poles around or anything like that, it just sticks on there so you can light up your subject. If you ever want to do any sort of vlogging or stuff like that with your camera, the camera by itself is kind of lacking as we've discussed earlier. So it's missing lights, microphones, etc. But in order to mount all that stuff, you'll need a cage like this one. So this is a GoPro 9 cage from Milanzi. Um, it's got space at the bottom to put your mic adapter. So that just goes in that way and then it can plug into your camera and then have your microphone on top of this part here that screws down and then you get the video micro which is just perfect because it's compact enough that uh, it still looks all right on a GoPro you know if you can get a massive long microphone it just looks a bit out of place so then you've got that that plugs in here so when it's this high up this protects your sound, so if it's really windy out, um, that will stop too much wind ruining the sound. Uh, and because it's raised up, hopefully it wouldn't come into shot. If it does, you can always adjust this, so you can pull that up higher and then push it against one of these ridges to keep the mic out of shot and it stops it wobbling and bobbling about. If you've got a light, you can slot that in here. If you've got some sort of tripod that screws in the bottom here and look you've got yourself a tripod set up there uh, and that vastly improves the sound quality that you get if you use inbuilt mics on any cameras they're often very very poor and um, the reason why everyone always recommends the Rode Video Micro is because you're getting a great balance of value size and quality they're a very good brand that produce very good microphones. So make sure you get an official one. Uh, I'll put links to some down in, in the description so you can see for yourself and check a bit out if you want to see more. Next, we're going to look at dollies or sliders. So this is from a company called Grip Gear. This is their director's set, which comes with a panning head. And the same motor then goes onto a track and then it electronically tracks along that going forward and back so you can get time lapses where it's moving. And it also comes with a little dolly. So it clips on like that, your GoPro goes in there and then you can change the speed of it and uh, then get it going. So it can go on this track as well and then you can set the tracks up in any orientation. It can like clamp onto things, posts and stuff and it's really compact. You can see how thin and small that is. And then at the ends you'd have pieces like this and these can be extended out to be like more stable and they can also be gripped around objects and then tightened up so whatever orientation you need and uh, you get these bumpers so that you can move that to wherever it needs to be and then when the motor reaches that part of the bumper it then will start going back the other way unless you set it to stop then it will just stop there so that just screws off you can use that. You can take this part off here, screw that on there, and then when you start it up, it just spins so you can get a panoramic view with your camera on top of that. So it's a real versatile set, uh, and it packs down really small. That fits inside a backpack easily. And uh, it's an all-in-one set. You can pick it up for about $100 off, off Amazon. I'll put some links down below. Uh, definitely worth a look and I'll do a, f a more formal review in the future so if you want to see that then definitely subscribe hit the notification bell then you'll be notified when any new videos go up if you understand exactly what this is all about then 
go in the comments and comment below uh, the person that's the most accurate soonest into what this all means and what it's in reference to I'll give you a free version of this t-shirt now just to let you know we do realize that the design we actually put it a bit too low so we've changed the design now so it's actually higher up in the chest so any newer versions will be up like this rather than weirdly low because it does look weirdly low doesn't it so now I want to talk about cases and bags so I've got a range of them here let's start with the official GoPro bag they're just like basic very soft very flexible cases so I wouldn't put any cameras in there um, necessarily because they're not very protective but it's fine for like what do I keep in here like cloths um, loads of like random bits and bobs and like these sticky things for like helmets and stuff so um, those, they're fine for that and if you get it free with some accessories then it's just another free little case to keep stuff in and then this is my most well used one now, I bought this a few years ago now back when I had the GoPro Hero 4 and um, it was perfect for that it's a hard case so you know your camera is fully protected and it comes with a, an insert so your camera fits in there perfectly you can also arrange all your batteries can slot in etc and it's got little places for things so to keep your camera really safe especially while traveling something like this cam kicks hard case is definitely worth getting this is a, a newer case i have and it's a, i would call it a semi hard case it's from telesyn but what's really good about it is that it can expand so when that's all zipped up it's much more compact so if you look inside it's got this part here arranged so you can put cameras in a row there and also there's access to this other portion where you can strap things in like strap batteries to it or whatever um, and it's got another netted compartment at there so you can keep everything separate and zip that up little pouches there too and it's a very well made case and then when you want to expand it you just undo this zip here all the way around and boom, this section now becomes much bigger, so a lot of stuff can be stored in there. This is probably my favorite backpack. This is the GoPro Seeker version two. So version one was a 16 liter backpack. This version two is an 18 liter. So what they did was expand this section. So it now has a slot for your laptop at the front and also one of those camel pack water sacks can go in there and then you can zip that up and it's got clips along the strap here so you can have your water spout from your camel pack so you can drink as you're going along which is really really useful so it's got a clip here so you can clip your bike mount in or any buckle mount into there and it's got these two blue things this chest mount clips to it so very simply you just slot these two bits in here and then it's got two clips and then you've got a chest mount as well which is central in the chest it's got lots of other little compartments on the side here with also bits to clip it into place so if you've got poles they can be all clipped in that can be cinched down and tightened it's got places here that you can shove velcro straps through so you can strap more to the back uh, it's got lots of different compartments for all your stuff zip see-through pouches and it's got a sort of built-in hard case to put all your cameras and then more of these pouches with a zip at the top and it's just a really well designed bag it's got the air pockets here and nice spongy backpack so if you can get this bag still I would highly recommend you get this one rather than the new version which is more of a, like a fashion bag rather than a usable bag like this one so if you're interested in any of the accessories that we've looked at in today's video then check out the links in the description below and you can also join us in the GoPro Filmmakers Facebook group again links below and uh, any questions you have big or small we'll be happy to answer them there and uh, if you want to be notified of the giveaways and competitions I mentioned earlier that are coming soon then definitely subscribe and hit the notification bell then you'll be notified as soon as those competitions go live and uh best of luck to you when that when they do go live and uh i'll see you on the next one